Hello, Seven Squad, and welcome back to the damn podcast channel. Y'all be sure to check out the description below. I have other channels that I go on, or that I have and that I'm on, so make sure if you like the vibe to subscribe to all of them here. Uh, this channel over here, we do quicker updates, things like that. For this video specifically, what we're going to be doing is this is actually a format that we usually do on the other channel with deeper dives, but it's just a small, short video, so I put it over here. Uh, so many people have asked me what I thought about the trailer to the upcoming Netflix docu-series, docu-whatever, uh, about the Lori Davo case, right? So I went, I watched it, I've taken some clips from it that I want to talk about, and then go over a quick little article about it that gives like the facts of it and whatnot. So that's the layout for this video. We're going to look at some clips, I'm going to talk about it, and then we'll talk about the, um, the, you know, the nuts and bolts of it afterwards. So let's go ahead and start right now. How are you, Bubba? I'm not good, Mom. Are you so sorry? Are you sorry for me, or are you sorry for my siblings? I would have never thought you would have ever done something like this. Wow, okay. Anytime I see anything to do with this case, it saddens me and it puts a weight in my stomach and my heart and it gives me goosebumps. So obviously seeing this and we're hearing from Colby and we're hearing like his perspective, different perspectives, obviously we'll get in the article what it talks about. Clearly from this trailer, it's coming from his perspective, right? And then seeing some of these things that we're about to see that I haven't seen yet that I'm just like, oh my gosh. It just always creates a thud for me. And so seeing this where you're hearing him conversating with her, it just it's it just goes all over me. What is it that you think that I've done? Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. Wow, the what is it that you think I've done part? And if you follow this case deeply, then you know, I mean, you remember these phone calls and all the stuff that's come out since now, right? Seeing, so two things about that clip. So that right there, I mean, it gives me goosebumps because uh, of course, a lot of us have, whether, you know, most of us have a mother, right? But when I say mother, I'm not talking about like the biological sense of it. I'm talking about a person in that zone in your life, like that kind of figure, a mother figure, whatever. So someone has, uh, most of us have that type of figure in our life. And so when we sit here and I see that and I imagine that, what is it you think I've done? And we know what's happened. And you, the perversion of the mother figure in this case of what she's done you know and hearing him talk to her it's just I mean it gives me goosebumps I mean my god look at this so there's that of just that it just I mean I'm speechless over it right then ending that clip with them in the car doing the Mr. Sandman thing I mean first of all whenever I see Tylee and JJ and doing being kids being themselves doing like the normal stuff whatever like not associated say with the videos we saw of after you know Charles's life was taken stuff like that but just home videos like this before maybe any of this stuff happened it's utterly heartbreaking right but it's also so surreal to me to see Lori doing something psh, normal I, because I cannot associate her with anything normal, right? And it's just, I, I mean, I can't. Like, we were only introduced to her via this case, those of us who don't know her beside that. So, very chilling, very spooky, 100% has my attention. When it's said from the director of Abducted in Plain Sight, if you know, you know. If you have not seen that movie, that documentary, go watch it, okay? Go watch it. We did have a wonderful family before this happened. Oh, hello. My mom has spent her whole life protecting us kids. Being a good mom is very important to me and a good wife. Again, we've heard this from family members, from, you know, the, the case and all the stuff of back when, whatever you want to call it, before this, before Chad, you know, Lori was the doting mother, the doting wife, uh, the, the the sense of normalcy, the protector and all this stuff. And again, it's very difficult for me to wrap my mind around this because the level of insanity that this case went to, to sit here and try and then say there was a level of normalcy to it. And again, I'm not trying to say somebody's right or wrong. I never knew the woman, right? So pff, I'm going to trust the family members and the people that knew her. I'm going to take their word were, right as to what they say about her so they know better obviously than I do um 
But nonetheless, hearing that and then seeing images such as like her at the beauty pageant where I'm like, oh my God. I mean, that is so disarming and the words coming out of her mouth, you're just like, you know, it does make you say what happened what happened and the, honestly if you look at it from a storytelling point of view the way they've set the trailer up obviously they want you to do that they want you to ask the question what happened so that you will continue to watch honestly Lori and charles looked like they had the ideal marriage but her beliefs had become a lot more extreme and that's one thing too with this case that I think frightens me frightens a lot of people because if you follow true crime a lot of times there might be cases where you don't identify with the people, right? And you're just like, no, I could, I don't identify with these people. I, I can't see myself being them or whatever. When you see couples like this that, and even someone like Lori and Charles and whatnot, where people might not identify because they, they came from a different income bracket or a different part of the country or whatever. But nonetheless, they're kind of like this poster, not poster child, but poster board family for like, oh, they look happy and they have everything and da 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 da. But then this happens, right? And this belief system takes hold and this just, you know, this left turn from reality comes in and just destroys the family. Um, it's very, it's, it's heartbreaking, but it's frightening because it's one of those things where you're just like, my God, you know, and the older that I get, the more I realize like anything can happen to anyone. You know what I'm saying? And this is one of those cases that makes you really realize that like, my God, I mean, you can just be going and you just never know who you're living next to, who you're married to, who you're sitting in a classroom next to, right? Anything can happen at any time. After she she met Chad Daybell. She changed. Who the hell is Chad Daybell? If that ain't the million dollar damn question of the century. We can prepare ourselves to survive through these trials. Chad Daybell believes there will be an apocalypse. The people that are righteous survive and that he can distinguish evil spirits from good spirits. I mean, I'm sorry, y'all, and I'm not trying to be hateful about this. He is the biggest walking doofus I think I've ever seen in my life. For the life of me, I cannot figure out what it is about him that drew people in. I do not get it. Is it the power? Is it the level of like, I'm promising you some 144,000 thing? I don't get it. And then when they start doing the belief systems of his coupled with him talking and stuff, it just infuriates me because all I do is think of the children and I just think of and Tammy and all these innocent Charles and all these innocent people who have lost their lives over this absolute ridiculous BS, okay? Because that's literally all that is, okay? Like, it, absurdness. It infuriates me to no end. I fought in this war for millennia. Two detectives come and knock on the door. Is Tylee or JJ here? And I was like, Tylee, my sister? I call my mom and her phone's dead. Charles wrote, she calls her own daughter a dark spirit. My throat fell in my stomach. And this again is a heartbreaking thing and we've heard, you know, from Kay and Larry, from Kresha, from other members of the family, just the, the slow unraveling of the the first moments of what happened and the learning of that and it never it, it it sends the same thud to my stomach it does every time i hear it where i'm just like and again you know my, the are all the hair is standing up over here it bothers me that much it sends chills down my spine every single time i cannot imagine what getting those phone calls was like what knocking on the door was like no words will ever be able to express the absolute utter heartbreak that that family had to experience and experience on a day-to-day -day basis knowing that memory knowing that loss I can't I cannot imagine if you are very dark your spirit has left your body you're a zombie now and the only way to free your spirit is to kill the body so this part when I saw this I was like oh my god Justin Lum I was like fangirling a little bit um, and again if you don't follow this case closely I always say you need to follow Justin Lum which is who we just saw and Nate Eaton they are just amazing reporters not just on this case but on many of anything they report on so make sure you follow them I'm really glad to see his face in this um, and then again with the content of what he's talking about the context of the dark spirits and all that it's it's so sad to see how much life is wasted but it's also scary to think how many people are going 
around and walking around, like I said, shopping at the stores next to you who subscribe to this, potentially, you know, that are willing to go the same route to take lives over this. Is JJ safe? He is safe and happy. My God, that phone call between Gibbs and Lori Vallow. Oh my God. And so it makes me wonder with the with the series, this, you know, what we're talking about here, Sent to My Mother, um, you know, are they going to be bringing up a lot of that stuff? Because oftentimes we see in true crime and all this kind of stuff, it becomes, you know, essentially regurgitated information, especially to people who might have followed this very closely. It's things that we have seen. Obviously, when these major platforms come and make these documentaries and whatnot, uh, they put their own blend on it, which I do think hearing from a different perspectives is, you know, very interesting but also healing because I think one thing at least for me that attracts me to true crime is figuring out the why and I know it really doesn't matter to me but it's almost like figuring out why why these people why did this have to happen to them but also uh, the admiration for the bravery not only to the victims survivors but how they did that how they get up every day and continue to go I find it to be very um uh, I guess admirable is the word for it, but encouraging or whatever. I'm not sure that's the right word, uh, but the psychology behind that is very inspirational to me to see how you know they can overcome what they have overcome and continue on. And so psychologically, I find that all very fascinating. And so I hope some of those nuggets are in here for us to kind of figure out for our own, you know, uh, curiosity. I guess you could say. Hi, my mom. What's the emergency there? My mom was just playing every card on everybody. And that's one thing about this too, what he just said, you know, my mom was playing every card on everybody. That's one of the infuriating things about infuriating things about Lori is that she really was. I mean, she was spinning so many plates, right? And so it makes me very curious with the courts coming up, like, is she gonna try and throw Chad under the bus? I don't think she is. I could be wrong and I don't have any kind of insider information, obviously, but I just don't feel like she is. I think she's still in La La Land. But nonetheless, I just feel like she was lying to so many different people. I do not believe she didn't know what she was doing is wrong. I do not believe that it's all Chad Daybell's fault, fault and that he just, you know, up oh, he came along and she was doing just fine and then subscribed to this belief system and off she went. I, you know, Again, I didn't know her, but at the end of the day, she made these decisions. She went along with them, and by her lying and scheming all along, I just, you know, it is what it is. I mean, I'm just, I'm not buying it. Being all those things together is not easy, so I'm basically a ticking time bomb. <laughs> Now you know they had to end with a bang, no pun intended. That right there is crazy, okay? A hundred percent crazy. That is so disarming, but that's what's so weird about this case. I mean, that really sums it up. I mean, obviously that's very exaggerated or whatever, like picking that clip and putting, you know, of her pageant days and whatnot. But it's so representative of this case, right? Because it was like she was a ticking time bomb. It was like that. It was this night and day situation going on. So that being said, I'm definitely watching this. Let's go over to the article real quick because I want to talk about some of just the, the, the hard facts about it, I guess you could say. So let's do that right now. The article is by Tudum, I believe this is called. It's called Deep Dive, Sins of Our Mother, Everything You Need to Know About the Docu-Series, Learn More About Lori Vallow and Her Alleged Crimes. And this is by Ryan Villarreal, August 24th, 2022. And what I'm going to do is just go over some, it does say major spoilers below, so what we're going to do is just talk, I mean, I've read it. If you follow the case, there's no spoilers here. You already know all this stuff. Um, but I'm just going to go over some of the basics of it. And so it does say that the trailer series, Sins of Our Mother, begins with a tense phone call between my mother and son who she who believes she has done something terrible her name is Lori Vallow you know, we already know what this is about. Uh, it's directed by Sky Borgen. Like it said in there, she directed uh, Abducted in Plain Sight and Girl in the Picture. Uh, Sense of Our Mother examines how Valos spiraled down downward into religious fanaticism and paranoia to find herself and her fifth husband, Chad Daybell, trending, standing trial for murder. This three-part series presents first-hand accounts from the people closest to both the victims and the alleged perpetrators as they seek to learn the truth behind this tragedy. Now, the release date is on Netflix and it's September 14th. So, who appears in Sins of Our Mother? The docu-series features interviews with Valo's son, Colby Ryan, her mother, Janice Cox, 
former sister-in-law Annie Cushing, former friend April Raymond, reporter Justin Lam, and Colby's wife Kelsey Ryan. What happens in Sins of Our Mother? This series presents various points of view from the people who know Vallow and Daybell and experience the events leading up to the deaths of their family members. The episodes detail Vallow's seemingly stable upbringing and a timeline of her adult years, during which she was married five times, had two children, and adopted a third. So again, I'm going to be on the lookout for this. We'll definitely be talking about that over here. We might do a live to talk about it on this channel here, so make sure to subscribe and come back over to it. So let me know, what do you think about the trailer? How do you feel about it? What do you think it's going to do? We think we're going to learn anything new. Uh, and that's it. I hope everybody's doing well. Thank you for joining, and I'll talk to you next time.